Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up, Indonesia City volunteers work with local authority to help quake survivors rebuild. We see how corporations with a good training system can keep young staff motivated at work. And in Taiwan, city volunteers commemorate the life of Xu Yang Hua Ying, who they have been caring for seven years. We kick off today's program in Indonesia. After the 6.1 magnitude earthquake struck Aceh, many houses are left in ruins and people are still missing. The Indonesia president and government officials set off to visit the hard hit areas to assess the extent of damage. Meanwhile, city volunteers have been handing out daily necessities and also working with the police officers in helping survivors rebuild their lives. In the wake of the July 2nd earthquake in Aceh, Indonesia, houses are wrecked. Some local residents set up makeshift tents next to their damaged houses to guard their leftover belongings. The Indonesia president and local government officials set off to Katol to offer support in this chaotic time. We will continue to look for our citizens. If the heavens allow them to be reunited with us, then that is a blessing. As the temperature from day to night here varies widely and living conditions are horrible, a few of the local residents' health are deteriorating. There's been a lot of crying, especially since it's crowded here. Once some people wake up, it's loud and we're often startled. It's cold and uncomfortable sleeping in the tents at the temporary shelter. My children cry each night. The weather is too cold for him and he is unable to eat. Fortunately, city is working with the local government and other charity organizations to provide daily necessities and set up a free clinic and an emotional support station. The most important is for the children to be happy and recover from the trauma of the event. We want them to forget about the disaster they saw. I'm very happy the police department is here to help us. Our worries are eased. Although the emotional wounds may never heal properly, but slowly moving away from the pain, local residents may start to rebuild their life. Moving to China, city was first established in Quinsan City, Jiangsu Province in 2003 with the help of a few Taiwanese businessmen. Since then, the organization Seeds of Love has flourished and now has nearly 500 local volunteers. Recently, at the 10th anniversary celebration, city volunteers vowed to encourage more people to practice recycling and together turn the city into a better place. This is the scene at the 10th anniversary celebration event of the Ciji Kunshan office in China. On stage, local volunteers put on the musical of Vow in Action to express their determination to walk the Ciji path. When we are on stage, we need to become our characters. It has been 10 years since Ciji volunteers first set foot in Kunshan City. Although we have encountered many obstacles along the way, the past 10 years have been great. Since the 1990s, many Taiwanese businessmen have traveled to Kunshan City to expand their business. In 2003, with the help of these businessmen, Ciji expanded its reach to many local communities. Currently, there are some 500 volunteers in Kunshan, with 90% of them being local volunteers. At first, we didn't have many city events in Kunsan City because we didn't have many volunteers. Back then, we even had to rent a bus and travel to Shanghai City to learn sign language. Right now, we have the city Kunsan office, so it is easier for local body service to learn sign language. For the past 10 years, Kunshan City volunteers have been working with their counterparts in Shanghai, distributing scholarships to needy students and raising money for their project of hope. In June of this year, with recognition from the local Environmental Protection Bureau, the Ciji Kunshan Environmental Education Center was established. The establishment of the Ciji Kunshan Environmental Education Center is not the end of our dream. In fact, it is the beginning. All of us need to work together so we can continue this dream, okay? <laughs> Through today's 10th anniversary celebration, we want to inspire more male volunteers to join our ranks. 
I hope that Ciji Kunsang office will soon expand and more and more people will become a part of our Ciji family. With these goods in mind, Kunshan Ciji volunteers promise to continue their good work and turn the city into a better place in the years to come. In the United States to spread city further into local communities, Taiwan city volunteers are often invited to share their experiences with their counterparts. Next, we meet Taiwan city volunteers Wei Xingjun and Wen Shuzhen, who seize the opportunity to share their stories even when on holiday. I don't have jet lag because I'm able to continue my city work here. I feel that my life is complete when I'm doing city. Inside the Tzu San Diego Liaison Office, Taiwan Tzu volunteer Wei Xingjun is sharing her experiences with members of the public. In spite of being on a holiday, Wei sees every chance to inspire more people to join her ranks. As long as you're willing to help a person, you become a Guanyin Bodhisattva for that person. This phrase changed my life for the better. After listening to Wei's talk, many people realize that it is never too late to do good deeds. From now on, if I have the ability, I want to contribute my share and help those in greater need. See many young people seize the chance to do good deeds. Taiwan City volunteer Wen Su Zhen, who also joined Ciji at a young age, shares the master's wisdom with those in the audience. The master turned around and told me, you are very fortunate to know me at such a young age. You are creating more blessings than bad karma. <laughs> Through their sharing, members of the public gain a better understanding of Ciji's spirit and the good deeds Ciji has done over the past 47 years. Many also realize that regardless of race or faith, as long as there are people in need, Ciji volunteers will be there to help. The turnover rate in jobs for the younger generation is particularly high and thus their resistance to stress is often in doubt for many employers. However, if young people come across a friendly boss or manager or a company that gives them a sense of mission and responsibility, they will be willing to give it their all. In today's report, we visit an international car company as well as our own Dia TV station to see how a good training system and management philosophy can keep young and talented staff motivated at work. Having worked for an international car company for six years, the young Wu Junhui now serves as the company's finance manager. Such an achievement could not have been possible without the company's personal development program. We have an employee development program, which means that every manager will meet with each of his staff to set their annual goals. They will also discuss what in the next two, three years the company can do to train you and how it can get you to where you want to be. The lack of experience and unwillingness to cooperate makes young people less competitive when applying for jobs. Nonetheless, Wu's Corporation, which has been recognized as one of Taiwan's best employers for two consecutive years, feels otherwise. The one-on-one -on -one training helps each employee put what they have learned to good use, an investment which the company happily contributes to keep their staff. When we recruit younger employees, we need to spend more time and investment in our training programs, which is a part of the company's responsibility. The success of one staff member means a more successful organization. Always focused and hardworking, Wu Junhui aims to face every challenge directly and make a breakthrough whenever he can. We need to build ourselves a solid foundation and not overestimate our ability. If you have prepared yourself well, when the opportunity comes, you can hold on to it. I think this is an advantage for young people. 
Besides a good training system, a company's management philosophy is another reason employees hold on to their jobs. Here at Dai TV, one can find many young yet senior staff. This is quite a fun job, though most of the time the media conference is already arranged, but you still don't know the details. Like just now, you won't know if there's anything we can film. Never afraid of challenges, cameraman Li Junwei has worked at Dai TV for six years. He believes it is here that he's able to spread goodness, truth and beauty. We don't need to go to the prosecutor's office, police station, the court or prison, and we don't do homicide cases either. It is not good for me and not good for the audience. Mr. Zheng Yang established Dai TV so that we can purify human minds. Another important thing is to balance the general public's knowledge. As most media stations report on things that will agitate their minds, but not on stories of kindness and love. Can I ask if the teacher for the August 1st show is confirmed? Also hoping to spread a positive message to others is Su Youngian, who has been at Dai TV for six years and is in charge of producing shows around environmental topics. In the process, I will think about what perspectives to leave with my audience and what I can do to make it happen. That way, I will feel different when doing my job and it feels like I am doing something that will benefit the general public. All employees like to be recognized and need a platform to demonstrate their talent. As long as companies are willing to invest time and effort in training their staff, a win-win situation is possible. Staying in Taiwan by moving to Taizong, three students from the Ziyong Senior High School in Dajia District invented an electronic straw man that runs on wind and solar power. The students' eco-friendly and sustainable creation later went on to win a gold medal at the 2013 Macau International Innovation and Invention Expo. Nothing is more frustrating than having the fruit of your labor devoured by wild birds. To keep these unwelcome invaders at bay, farmers set up scale crawls, set up fire quakers, or check on their fields on a regular basis. My grandpa has to get up in the early morning to check on his fields. In the afternoon, he also checks again. I could not bear to see my grandpa being so tired. To help his grandpa reduce his workload, Xiao Yuxiang started searching for effective ways to keep the wild birds away. He later developed this electronic scale crow, which can project a spinning laser beam that frightens away birds. It's fully automatic and eco-friendly. We made the laser beam rotate 360 degrees to expand its range in driving away wild birds. So what is the power source of this electronic device? Normally, it is difficult to connect to electric outlets and farms, so I suggested using wind and solar power to run it instead. This device can transform solar power into electricity, which will be saved in the battery. It can truly reach the goal of sustainability. Thanks to their ingenuity, the team won a gold medal at the 2013 Macau International Innovation and Invention Expo for the invention. In Zhanghua County, nine junior high school students while attending a three-day cycling event organized by the China Youth Corps had the opportunity to involve themselves in social work. On the morning of July 10th, the boys arrived at the Cixi Fangyuan Recycling Station, where they practiced recycling with Cixi volunteers. The students all agreed that though it was hard work, it was a rewarding and fun experience. Under the guidance of city volunteers, nine high school students separate recyclables into categories. For them, sorting recyclables under the sun is a new experience. Not only can we help people, but recycling can also make our planet a cleaner place. It's great to have them. If they're willing to practice recycling, I am more than willing to attend to their stomachs. As these nine students are labelled as the mischievous bunch at school, under the school's recommendation, they signed up for a three-day bike activity organised by the Youth Corps and had the opportunity to take part in social work. Global warming is getting more severe by the day, so the more recycling we do, the better it is for our planet. This practical experience will help them become more mature and thoughtful.
Having covered more than 120 kilometers on their bicycles in the span of three days, through doing social work and practicing recycling, these nine students have been on an unforgettable journey and now realize they need to cherish all their blessings. Also using the summer break wisely are members of the City Teachers Association in the Northern District and students from City University and City College of Technology who are holding summer camps in different elementary schools in Nantou County. The teachers and students hope the various activities designed for the youngsters will instill this summer with rich and meaningful lessons. A chorus of song and laughter starts the summer camp event here in Nantou County in central Taiwan, where 122 students and 90 staff members are gathered at the Jusan Elementary School to begin their summer fun. This event gives children the correct start to learning wisdom. Besides providing them with a good time, we hope these three days will be an experience for them to remember and that they will be proud that they were able to participate in this camp. One participant was especially studious, being inspired by the story of the girl with one leg from Guizhou province. Seeing her bravery and her determination to continue to study moved me. I look to her as a role model. Master Zheng Yan says there are two things in the world that cannot be delayed. One is fulfilling your filial duties, the other is doing good deeds. These two lessons are important, so I must carry out these two tasks immediately. To make the event more attractive, City's Teachers Association members especially designed activities for the children, which meant that even those who are shy have been able to meet new friends. We're very glad to be able to participate in this event, and since there are friends that she knows that are attending camp, my daughter is even happier. I want her to be able to experience the large family atmosphere of City. The three-day camp is filled with rich content that the children can carry with them for not only the summer, but their life. In the district of New Taipei City, volunteers and family members came together to honor the memory of 110-year-old Xu Yang Hua Ying, who passed away last month. Joining the memorial was her grandson Xu Hong Yu, the principal of the Ciji Los Angeles Academy, who flew back monthly to visit his grandmother when she was still alive. And as Ciji volunteers have begun paying regular visits to the grandma since 2006, the family invited them to the memorial service. As for the centenarian, Ciji was also family. This is Xu Yang Hua Ying before she passed away. The first thing everyone noticed about her was her warm smile. From May 15th of 2006, Whenever volunteers come, if they remember, they would write their names here. For eight years, volunteers accompany Xu Yang, filling her days with warmth and companionship. Xu Yang's grandson is currently the principal of the Ciji Academy in Los Angeles. Despite the distance, once a month, he will fly back to be with his grandmother. I was working at the Ciji Academy and someone asked where I was going. I told them I was going to see my grandmother. However, for this visit, Xu Hongyu has to settle with sharing stories in remembrance of his grandmother as she had already passed away. I want to thank you all for being by her side and singing the song Longing for the Spring Breeze with her. There was something that I never had a chance to do. Although now gone, Xu Yang's life, which lasted two centuries, continues to offer an important lesson for all her relatives and those who were close to her. Being able to live to over a hundred, her life's philosophy of being content with what she had was an inspiration for all of us. 
back to Taizong City, city volunteers and local residents recently took part in the opening ceremony of the new Beitun Recycling Station. The land that the new recycling station sits on was donated by Wu Yixiong, whose wife Chen Yixiong was a city volunteer and had passed away last year. As her last wish was to donate a piece of land to Tsuji, Wu decided to see her dream through. At the opening ceremony of the new Beitun Recycling Station, city volunteers put on a lion dance to light up the venue. In May, the landlord of the old Beitun Recycling Station decided to reclaim his land. Volunteers initially were worried about where to set up the new station. Thankfully, Wu Yixiong contacted Tsuji and offered a piece of his land to serve as the new location of the recycling station. My wife was a member of Tsuji. My children told me, since we don't need this land right now, why not lend it to Tsuji? Wu Yixiong's wife was a Tsuji volunteer. Before she passed away last year, her last wish was to donate land to Tsuji. Now her last wish has been seen through by her husband and children with the opening of the new Beitun Recycling Station. <laughs> Joining Tsuji volunteers in stomping plastic bottles, everyone is having a good time. Thanks to Wu's donation, volunteers and local residents can keep up with their efforts in protecting our Mother Earth. Also in Taizong, we meet Qinghai Junior High School student Huang Qi Wei, a national boxer who will be representing Taiwan to participate in the 2013 World Youth Championships. Despite his tight training schedules, Huang still managed to show up at his mother's fruit stand to help out whenever he can. His filial and conscientious attitude was recognized by his teacher. Let's take a look. Helping his mother slice the pineapples is recent junior high school graduate Huang Qi Wei, who is often seen at his mother's fruit stand. Once injured when cutting fruits, made Huang realized how difficult the work could be, so he comes to help regularly. A few cuts won't stop me from helping my mom. I have to seize the opportunity to help her, or otherwise, when I move to Erling, my mom has to take care of the business alone. Huang is also the winner of Taiwan's national boxing competition. Despite a tight training schedule, Huang still squeezes in some time to help his mother. He is polite and leads an orderly lifestyle. He helps carry heavy items for me and his aunt. He is a very thoughtful child. At home, Huang fulfills his video duties, while at school, he focuses on training. He is positive, conscientious, and determined. I think he is a role model for many youngsters nowadays. Huang's sincerity and humbleness brings him success, as all his family and friends hope that he will make Taiwan proud in the upcoming boxing games. Staying in Taiwan at the end of today's program, we go to Taipei's Xingyi District, which is an area known for its expensive and luxury housing market. It is here city volunteers have been caring for a family of four, as the mother and two of the children are mentally challenged. The blue and white uniformed volunteers recently arrived to help them clean up their house. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.